In this lecture, we'll talk about reaching the digital consumer. We've seen that consumer-generated communications and digital media connect consumers to, to suppliers or to companies as never before. In many ways, these media make uh, some of the professional market, marketers' power and control. They take it away and give it to others, essentially making it more difficult in one way to control the message. Um, this, they place it in the hands of the consumers, in other words. However, this shift does not have to spell doom for the marketers who are trying to hold and maintain the attention of their potential customers. Uh, while consumers use digital media to access more product information, marketers can use those same sites to get better, more targeted information about what the consumers are doing and what the consumers want. Often they can get this better than they could with traditional marketing venues when you think about it. Marketers increasingly use consumer generated content to aid their own marketing efforts, even going so far as to incorporate internet bloggers into their publicity campaigns. Finally, marketers are also beginning to use internet to track success of their online marketing campaigns, uh, creating an entirely new way of gathering marketing research. The challenge for digital marketers and digital media is to constantly adapt to the new technologies that are changing consumer patterns. Unfortunately, the attrition rate for, attrition rate for digital media channels is very high. Some are die, die off each year and new ones emerge. As in traditional marketing, this makes the efforts to maintain and stay focused on your market more and more difficult over time. Creators are consumers who create their own media outlets, such as blogs, podcasts, consumer-generated videos, and wikis. Consumer-generated media are increasingly important to online marketers as a conduit for addressing the consumers directly. The second group uh, of internet users are conversationalists. Conversationalists regularly update their Twitter feeds or status updates on social networking sites. Although they're less involved than the creators of content, conversationalists spend time at least once a week or so, sometimes more often, on these sites and making updates on them. The third category are critics. These consist of people who comment on blogs and post ratings and reviews, etc., uh, on various websites like Yelp. Because many online shoppers read these ratings and reviews to influence their purchasing decisions, critics should be the primary, a primary component of the company's digital marketing strategy. The, uh, the next category is called collectors. Collectors use, they gather information and organize that content that's generated by critics and collectors or in creators. Because collectors are active members of several of online communities, perhaps many online communities, a company story or site that catches the eye of a collector is likely to be posted, discussed, and distributed on the collector's sites and made available to other online users who are looking for information. Some of the other characters uh, that you might identify uh, online are joiners. These include people who become users of Twitter, Facebook, and other social network sites. Not unusual for consumers to be members of several sites. Uh, joiners use these sites to connect and network with other users, but, they're seen, but as we've seen, marketers can also take advantage of, uh, of all of these various sites and use them to connect with consumers and develop consumer relationships. The last two segments of this online community are spectators who read online information but don't really join the groups or post anywhere. Um, they're the largest group in most countries. Um, and then there's inactives who are online users who do not participate in any online media at all, but their, their numbers are dwindling. Um, my brother, for example, prides himself in having no online footprint. Marketers need to consider what proportion of online consumers are creating, conversing, rating, collecting, joining, or simply reading the online materials that are relevant to your product and service. So these are the, this is the kind of description of the dynamics of the online community. Let's talk about how we think, how this applies to market research. 
Market research and information systems can use digital media and all these social networking sites to understand this community and how it could help them market their products and services, understand consumer preferences. Sites such as Twitter and Facebook can be substitutes for focus groups. If you think about it, online surveys can serve as an alternative to mail, uh, telephone, or even personal interviews. Crowdsourcing describes how marketers use digital media to find out opinions and the needs of the crowd or potential markets. Crowdsourcing lets companies gather and utilize consumers' ideas in an interactive way while they're creating new products. You ask the consumers what they want, you get a lot of feedback, and you can use that as you develop your product and service offerings. Consumer feedback has always been an important part of marketing, and it continues to be an important part of the digital media equation. Ratings and reviews have become exception, exceptionally popular. Online reviews are estimated to influence the buying decisions of 90% of U.S. consumers. Today, most online shoppers search the internet for ratings and reviews before making any major purchase decisions. While consumer-generated content about a firm can be positive or negative, digital media forums do allow businesses to closely monitor what their customers are saying about them and their products. Yet despite the ease and obvious importance of online feedback, many companies still do not yet take full advantage of the digital tools that are at their disposal. The next lecture, we'll talk about some of the legal concerns with all of this online marketing.